My name is Jared Quinn. I'm a professor of law at National University of Ireland in Galway, where I direct a research centre on international and comparative uh, disability law and policy. My name is Professor Kenneth Dawson. I'm from the Centre of Bio-Nano Interactions in UCD in Dublin. My name is Etna Dempsey, so I work in the chemistry department at ITT Dublin in Tala, and uh, I'm principal investigator in the CREATE Research Centre. My name is Brian Rodriguez, and I'm a lecturer in nanoscience at the School of Physics and a Conway Fellow at the Conway Institute of Biomolecular and Biomedical uh, Research at the University College Dublin. The FP7 Marie Curie uh, action that we've been directly involved with is the Initial Training Network, uh, and we are actually the coordinator of that at NUI in Galway. Um, we have approximately 14 ESRs uh, directly engaged on that, spread amongst about seven different European sites. There are two projects. One is an ITN, and it's called uh, Path Chooser. And there's another project, uh, which is an IAPP, which is a sort of an industry-linked project, which is actually called Pathfinder. I was involved in two um, incoming international fellowships, one in FP6 and um, one that has just finished in, F in FP7. And uh, I'm currently coordinating an IRSIS, Marie Curie IRSIS, International Research Staff Exchange Programme. And that's in its second year at the moment. The IRSIS project I'm working on at the moment involves um, partners from outside the EU, which would include the Ukraine, South Africa, Egypt and Tunisia. Um, and the European countries are ourselves, Ireland, and we're coordinating, coordinating the project, um, Portugal, France, Sweden and Romania. The mobilities are between those countries, so we build, off, build on the expertise that um, those institutions bring. So far, we've been involved in uh, the Marie Curie uh, Initial Training Network. Um, I had tried several times to recruit uh, highly qualified postdoctoral researchers through the Marie Curie Fellowship Program, um, but this was the first program that we were f successfully funded for. Marie Curie actions are very prestigious awards and they're well, well known, so I would have known about them even during my own PhD. Um, so I was well aware of the programme and uh, was interested in applying um, and got the opportunity over the last couple of years. Shortly after joining UCD, I started hearing about these Marie Curie uh, actions. And uh, as I mentioned, I, I tried to apply for some funding to get a postdoctoral researcher to come. Um, and in discussing with uh, one of my collaborators in, in Portugal, we ended up forming kind of the nucleus of an idea for a Marie Curie initial training network. Um, and slowly kind of uh, started figuring out uh, which partners we could include in that to make a, a broader project. I've known about Marie Curie actions forever. Um, I've been in this game for a while and I've always liked them. The Marie Curie actions are um, quite special amongst the, if you like, collection of uh, framework program, as they burn on actions and divisions. Um, firstly, it's called bottom-up. What that means is that the scientists and the researchers choose the topic that they study, and that's a unique opportunity for them. But actually, to me, that's not the fundamental point about the Marie Curie action. The fundamental point is that it's so simple and so clear what the objectives are. I suppose I applied to get access to European funding um, and also really I suppose the mobilities allow us to bring in expertise that doesn't exist in, in, within the group. Um, so really the benefit is having these experienced researchers from abroad um, who can work on these high quality projects and produce good outputs um, in terms of publications and so forth. I decided to get involved with uh, Marie Curie funding because I was really uh, intrigued with the idea of the secondments for the researchers, for the early stage researchers. Uh, the idea that you can design a project where you're only thinking about uh, what you need for the success of the project and you're not limited by what resources you currently have in a group. So you can start to think about, well, for the success of this project, to tackle this particular problem, uh, I would need the resources from this partner in Portugal and this partner in Germany. And you're able to combine all of those uh, to have a really successful project.
the consortium came about as a result, I suppose, of networking at conferences. And I met with the Ukrainian and, and South African partner and we were discussing opportunities for funding. Um, they had uh, a network of um, collaborators in various institutions. So this resulted in a 10 country consortium being established. There is a requirement uh, going forward for a Marie Curie initial training network that you would have a non-academic partner. Um, in our experience, this is a tremendous asset to the network. Uh, essentially, my advice would be to try and pick a non-academic actor that's in your field who may not necessarily completely agree with your agenda, but nevertheless to work closely with that actor uh, to try and find different ways of achieving what both of us want to achieve. The benefits of being involved in the Marie Curie actions, I suppose, would include access to expertise at these international laboratories and their facilities and resources. And I think there's great experience to be gained from um, traveling to these institutions and spending time abroad. So the researchers themselves benefit, the group benefits, and we've got access to further funding that we can leverage uh, from these initial projects. Again, I will come back to the fact that the Marie Curie program is a, a relatively simple, clear structure, um, easily managed if you want to be a coordinator, very few complex issues. From the perspective of the early stage researchers, uh, they have gained a lot of benefit from the networks that we have individually and collectively as members of the network for example, Galway University, University of Leeds. So we've placed them in key organisations across Europe that bring about change. For example, the EU Fundamental Rights Agency in Vienna, the European Disability Forum in Brussels, uh, and so on and so forth. And that those kinds of placements have given them an insight into the process of change that they would absolutely never have acquired if they were a stay-at-the-desk PhD student. I would say that we've had a number of international uh, training schools for the ESRs, which have been very successful and very popular for the ESRs. Uh, all of the ESRs have made presentations at international conferences, and I think we've done a, a pretty good job at uh, r achieving the goals of the project so far. The progress has been really outstanding. Uh, about a year ago, it was designated one of the success stories by the European Commission. And what we're particularly happy with, that is to say all of the, the partners in the program, is the progress the ESRs, the early stage researchers and PhD students have made, because it's pretty obvious that at this point um, that they have really acquired an excellent facility in trying to engineer change, trying to identify opportunities for change, and even create opportunities for change at European level um, and in their member states. That's been extremely gratifying to us because as academics, we feel we're passing the baton on to the next generation. And, and they too feel that they've acquired skills to not just acquire knowledge, but to use that knowledge. And that, of course, makes them eminently employable as well. People have the perception that because it's an EU program that it's mired in complexity and you're going to get bogged down interminably. From my point of view, once you understand the deep logic behind the program, it's quite easy to actually plan systematically how you're going to implement. What I would suggest strongly is that people would consider ways of building in additional administrative support to enable the pro program to run smoothly. But I wouldn't be deterred by these perceptions, which are tend to be quite exaggerated about the administrative complexity involved. The best thing about working on the Marie Curie Action projects is being able to meet with and work with international researchers, uh, PhD students and fellows, and these individuals would have contributed hugely to our team over the years. So it's definitely something I'd like to continue with into the future. One of the really nice things about the Marie Curie program is there is no uh, nationality or citizenship requirements for the early stage researchers stroke PhDs. So we've been blessed by having a wide range of nationalities on the program, including from the Ukraine, um, from Turkey, 
to, I think, from the United States as well as from all over Europe. And that has really added greatly to the um, color and the richness and the depth of the, the whole program. And I would encourage coordinators who are intending putting proposals together to think about high quality applicants from around the world, not just within the European region. And thankfully, most of those early stage researchers are now committed to remaining in Europe and actually doing the right thing for us in Europe. I would highly encourage academics to get involved in the Marie Curie um, Horizon 2020 programs. In terms of me as a coordinator of the program, I think I've gained very, very significantly because we've, in a sense, set up a very dense network of communication and research. And in a sense, it's fueled me for the next five or seven years, at least in terms of my own research agenda. Marie Curie Actions, um, where it, it's really very simple very concise, very elegant. Uh, I recommend it. And I, I particularly recommend it for young academics because it, it sort of allows you to grow your roots in a very natural way in the university context. I'd recommend the Marie Curie Actions and they're a very good entry point into Horizon 2020 projects. Uh, they allow you to get access to collaborators abroad and also build on the expertise that the mobility brings into the team.